we're going to take we're going to take a small trip down memory lane. Okay. Now you guys saw what happened at the Capitol, right? It reminded me of of something uh particularly in the way the media was reporting it, right? So what happened at the Capitol, uh you know, you have various terms describing it, a coup and insurrection. Um what we heard in the media, you heard CNN reporting this, uh, for example, and uh, many others, um, was that, you know, there was a plot. So it wasn't just, oh, it's a bunch of rednecks, a bunch of, you know, uh, geezas that <laughs> were just coming like an angry mob. No, no, no. This was a, a planned thing, and they were ready to murder people. They, they wanted to, you know, assassinate politicians. That's what we were told. Okay? And not, not just the media said that. As a matter of fact, this is from... So let me let me pull this up for you. Okay, this is from the Guardian, right? This is uh, 15th of January. They said Capitol rioters plan to capture and kill politicians, the prosecutors. Charges so far include hurling fire extinguisher at officer and beating another with a flagpole, right? And and this the guy in the picture there, uh, I think his name is Angeli or something. Like he wrote a letter apparently to to Mike Pence. So they're saying that this was very serious, right? And it turns out that this was not true. So now the Department of Justice is saying there's no evidence of kill capture teams at the riot. Now the top federal prosecutor in D.C. says there's no direct evidence to suggest that rioters who stormed the U.S. Capitol had formed kill capture teams. Oh, OK. Again, I'm trying to zoom out here. Maybe you can see that better that way. OK, so I want to jog your memories and take you a little bit down, down, uh, take a little trip down memory lane. If you recall. Um, back before before Iraq was invaded, okay? Before Iraq was invaded. This is at the very beginning of the war on terror. So if you're my age, if you're around 28, maybe you remember this. I, I seem to have a very good memory of, of this time. And, uh, you know, I, I never forgot these uh, scandals, you know, the, uh, which we'll get to in a second. I have them, I have them ready for you. So <laughs> if you, you remember the anthrax scare, yeah? The, we had members of uh, the U.S. Congress and members of the media being sent anthrax letters and those letters said death to america and you know they're written in, like like the most cheesy kind of um letter that you 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 could possibly come up with death to america allah akbar you know like the, the just i'm 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 almost verbatim quoting that for you okay and it looked like it was written by a child and we were led to believe by the media that iraq was behind this so, so you must understand, this was not just a thing of, oh, Iraq has weapons of mass destruction, uh, these bio, uh, these mobile bio weapon stations, they can build biological weapons on the fly. You know, you'd park it and you can just build a fucking weapon in the parking lot. That's what the U.S. was saying. I'm not joking. Colin Powell, that's what he presented at the U.N. There was, this was before that. They were saying, look, they're sending them to the heart of our capital. They're going after our political elite. That's how serious this is. In the heart of America, in D.C., in the capital. The very same building. Do you understand what's going on here? So they were working on how can we strike fear into the heart of, of Americans? Well, we'll just tell them that these weapons, the, these threats are present in the heart of our capital. Right. So ju just to just to give you a visual example of these letters. Right. You, it's very it's very important that you follow the what happened here because many people forget. Here here's one of them. I mean this is just. It looks like it's written by a child, right? Death to America, death to Israel. Allah is great. Okay. Um, yeah uh, yeah that's. <laughs> so we were led to believe that these were real. These were genuine. Al Qaeda was behind them. Iraq was behind them. Everyone was behind them, right? All of all of America's great enemies, and this was reason enough for America to go and bomb the shit out of Iraq, and it's still there. Right. 17 years later, and this was reason enough to go and you know, bomb the crap out of Afghanistan. And this is why we have the war on terror now, almost two decades later, still going on. So, I, I, you know, I think it's, it's right. It's, it's always the right moment to bring this up because we're still in it. It's, it's not gone away. This is not history. It's still happening. But a lot of people would like to forget about how silly this shit is and how they fucking lied about it. They flat out lied. OK, so. You can see here. I'm just pulling this up for you again. All right. So ironically enough, I started looking up the, the anthrax uh, letters again, right? And I found an article. I found an article and I, was, I started reading it. 
And I was like, damn, this shit is tight. This is legit. This is legit. Look what this line over here says. The 2001 anthrax attacks remain one of the great mysteries of the post 9-11 era. After 9-11 itself, let me zoom in a bit more so you can read that with me. Okay? The anthrax attacks were probably the most consequential event of the Bush presidency. One could make a persuasive case that they were actually more consequential. The 9-11 attacks were obviously traumatic for the country, but in the absence of the anthrax attacks, 9-11 could easily have been perceived as a single isolated event. It was really the anthrax letters, with the first one sent on September 18th, just one week after 9-11, that severely ratcheted up the fear levels and created the climate that would dominate in this country for the next several years after. It was anthrax sent directly into the heart of the country's elite political and media institutions to then Senate Majority Leader Tom Deschel, uh, Lee, and NBC News anchor Tom Brokaw, and other leading media outlets that created the impression that social order itself was genuinely threatened by Islamic radicalism. Oh, damn, this shit sounds familiar, doesn't it? By the way, that, that was written by Glenn Greenwald. I was like, oh, man, <laughs> like, I'm not surprised. It's so brilliant. Only, you know, there are very few who at the time, this is 2008, and I'll get to why it was 2008, but, but it is brilliant. And, and this perfectly encapsulates the mood at the time. And I don't say that just because I like Glenn and Glenn wrote this. I'm telling you because that, I remember that shit from seeing it, hearing it, experiencing it. And not just with these, not just with these with the anthrax letters, but also in Britain. You had the British media going out, you know, railing about, oh my God, 45 minutes away from attack. You had the, um, what was it called again? The September dossier, I think. And then it turned out, it, the, the, as, as they said in the British media, it was sexed up, meaning it was an exaggerated pile of bullshit, right? And, and there was a whole scandal with the BBC and then Dr. Kelly killed himself. I don't think people remember how fucking wild this, these times were. Like, <laughs> you, you, like, I'm, I'm laughing out of nervousness, but like, you don't remember how fucking wild these times were. And you had like, these threat terror levels, like, like in the UK and the US, right? You had uh, an orange and a red, and I think it went up to five or seven. I can't remember. And you were supposed to feel frightened, like the media or the news would come on, you know, BBC or Sky News or whatever. And they tell you the threat level has been raised to something because someone farted in a tube. You know, I, I mean, like it was it was crazy. It was crazy. They, they were fermenting they, they, like like an, like a fucking Petri dish, you know, they, they, they worked it out like down to a science, man. All bullshit. Like, don't don't sit there and tell me all oh, this is just like you're exaggerating. No, I'm not exaggerating, you asshole. I fucking remember it. All of it. They lied about every fucking thing, man. Everything. And this is one of those lies. And why did they do this? They did this to justify the fucking war on terror. So, you know, j just just to show you something over here. Look at this, right? The same thing back in the day from The Guardian. This is 16th of October, 2001. Anthrax panic spreads as top U.S. senator is targeted. Bush links Senate bioterror attack to bin Laden, right? And then, oh my God, they had this whole thing about whether, is it bin Laden or is it Iraq? And then ABC News, right? ABC News went on to publish this, um, uh, these, these uh, stories that it was linked to Iraq and Saddam Hussein, right? And... Give me a second over here. Just trying to get this up for you. Yeah, look. ABC said four well-placed and separate sources fed them information about this, right? That sounds awfully familiar, right? It's like a lot of the shit you hear about Bounty Gate, Ralph. Like, like uh, some <laughs> unnamed U.S. intelligence official. Yeah, this is the 2001 version of that, okay? We always have that. And... What's really significant about this is that they, they lied about the, um, uh, the source of it, right? So, you remember Ben tonight? ABC News published a story saying that the anthrax had Ben tonight in it. And this was therefore a, a signature of Saddam Hussein. Like, oh, he's behind it. Iraq is behind it because, you know, only Iraq manufacturers, only Saddam has manufactured biological weapons using bentonite, right? It's like, oh, this is his signature, like uh, blue meth in Breaking Bad, right? <laughs> it's Heisenberg crystal. Yeah, this was, oh, it's, just, it's Saddam anthrax, man. Look, we found some bentonite. Yeah, it was all bullshit. There was no fucking bentonite in it. It was all, all nonsense. 
it turns out this story was written in 2008, by the way, because the, the, the guy who, who's behind this was in the U.S. Okay, hold on. I think his picture is over here in this, uh, in this article. But um, I'm going to link this, by the way. Please go through it because Glenn just debunks like every, every piece of crap that they reported and how they just did it without any kind of... Uh, again, like this is the thing about the war on terror in the beginning. At best, you could say they were negligent. At best. And, and negligent is putting it lightly. I mean, when, you, when you're ending up murdering millions of people, that's not negligence, right? That's beyond that. I think that's, that's criminal uh, behavior. And so, see, just two months after the ABC's report, you had Bush naming Iraq as a member of the axis of evil. <laughs> like, th this is how quickly things were developing and escalating and how complicit the media was. You need to understand this. Okay, for those of you who don't remember or who, <laughs> you know, th th this is really important. And, the ABC have never retracted that story, huh? By the way, they've never retracted it or corrected it. I mean, could you imagine getting away with such a lie? This is a lie of epic proportions. I mean, take the wildest shit that Alex Jones has said. Alex Jones has been deplatformed. Take the wildest shit that he said. It doesn't come close to this. You're accusing another country of manufacturing biological weapons and then sending them to the U.S. Senate. I mean, th this is a lie of, of colossal astronomical proportions. To report something like that. I mean, you better, you better cross-check that fucking thing 15,000 times before you publish it. Jesus Christ, man, I, I, check, I check for spelling errors in an email before I send it. And, or, or, or like a, a tweet or something, you know? You published fucking lies about WMDs and you, you didn't check that shit? Of course they didn't bother checking it. They, 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 whether they knew or they didn't know, it didn't matter. Their fucking job is to report this bullshit. This is why I have such a, a disdain and contempt for mainstream media, because I remember all of the shit and I remember how it was fucking lies. Just, just look at. Just look at how, th how this changed, right? Anthrax panic spreads and then uh, look, the anthrax scare, not a germ of truth. But of course, it's too late. This article here, this headlines from 2011. How many Rockies have died until 2011? You finally come around. It's too late. You should have been doing your fucking job before you published that shit, before you were banging the war drums for, for this invasion. Too fucking late. I mean, this is criminal. It's really criminal. So, ju just to give you another example, uh, <laughs> again, th th what's hilarious about this is that, um, hold on, I'll show you. This is in the British media at the time, right? This is from the British media. And because, um, like I said, it didn't stop with the anthrax letters and it didn't stop with uh, uh, with that. We also had a British version of it. Look at look at what the what they were saying. <laughs> so you had you had Brits 45 minutes from doom. Oh, my God. Saddam is going to strike Cyprus, right? Because it's within missile range. And then evening standard 45 minutes from attack. You see front page front fucking page. Look, dossier reveals Saddam is ready to launch chemical war strikes. Okay? Daily Express, Saddam can strike in 45 minutes. Oh my god. Imminent threat, 45 minutes? Oh my god. They're coming for us. And you, just like you have Cenk, Cenk <laughs> Uger the other day, he's like, man, those, those rioters, they were within minutes of Mike Pence. It would have been a bloodbath. Minutes. Oh my god, they were minutes away. I was like, I've heard, what? What? <laughs> wait, wait, I know this. <laughs> I've seen this movie before. I know this fucking routine. I mean, this is from The Sun. <laughs> now, the funny thing about this one, look, you'll excuse this one about Britney. Britney nips like bullets, and it's just a paparazzi picture. <laughs> What's hilarious is they actually had the priority right. You know, The Sun is like, um, the Sun is a gutter newspaper, man. This is like trash, you know? This is like the Daily Mail in the UK. It's trash. You wipe your ass with it, not even. And, and it's so funny how The Sun is like the, the only one out of all of them that gets the priorities right. Like, like the story about Britney, as obnoxious as, as it is, is still more accurate than that fucking lies, uh, that lie about WMDs, right? <laughs> the Britney story is more accurate. Just the irony. I mean, seriously, the, the goddamn irony. It's, it's kind of like in the, last, uh, uh, in the last months when you had the extradition hearing on Assange. You had the Daily Mail reporting on it when, when other outlets weren't. Like da daily, right? They were, they were doing almost daily recaps. I was like, what? Oh, okay. Weird. <laughs> I mean, if they're doing it, what does that say about you? 
anyway, I just I just want to I just want to give you um, a lesson from all of this, right? The the lesson is don't buy the bullshit. Exercise caution. I think that's I think anyone would agree with me on that, right? Exercise caution. Because as as you're seeing now the the media and the Democrats saying that, oh my God, there is this imminent threat. It, it is imminent. Like it exists whether you like it or not. It is there. And they've, you know, they've burst into the heart of the of the Capitol building and they were going to kill the politicians. And these people are just ruthless. And that and therefore, therefore, we have to do XYZ. Domestic terror laws, you know, maybe deplatform some people, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Expand the surveillance state. This is such a big threat, therefore we have to do this. I'm sorry. And, and just like that story, I think it was an NBC, about the FBI. Look how clever they are. You have the FBI saying, well, man, we had advanced knowledge this was going to happen. But, you know, the First Amendment was in the way. We didn't want to... We didn't want to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, we didn't want to, you know, tread on uh, people's first, first Amendment rights. Therefore, we couldn't do anything about it. And so they're very clever with, with this, because what does that mean? It's like, oh, well, look, man, in the future, if you want us to stop this, I, I'm afraid we're going to have to trample on your civil liberties a bit, just a bit. And then they take a fucking mile, right? We've seen this movie before. I've seen this movie before. Albeit, it's, it's not as severe. I will give you that. I, 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 th I don't think it's, it's uh, you know, I think you can draw some comparisons, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to g give you a, a word of caution and just telling you to exercise caution because the, the media, man, uh, they're in the business of sensationalizing, right? And again, it's very ironic because when they kill people and they end up making millions, I mean, you have people who, who fail upwards, right? You have people like uh, Chef Smith or Wolf Blitzer, all these pieces of shit. You know, they, they fucking lie about, about the, the Iraq war and they fail upwards. I don't see them being banned from TV or banned online. They fucking made money off of the Iraq war. They made money off of these lies. No one's punished them. But you know, if you're... If you're so, so you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's one sense of accountability for... Uh, people like Alex Jones, but apparently if you do far worse things and you end up murdering and contributing to the propaganda machine and complicit in the murder of millions of Iraqis and d their displacement, like, that's fine. Oh, no, you, please come back on TV. Please have a show. Here, your own program. <laughs> what? No, no, which one is it? Like, which one is it? You, you have to pick. Don't give me this double standard bullshit. So anyway, be exercise caution. Because we've seen this before, where the, oh my god, it's, it's striking fear into the heart of the nation's capital. Watch out, these terrorists are everywhere. <laughs> if they're, if they're going to lie about WMDs, if they're going to lie about that shit, they will lie about anything. Anything. You name it. I mean, I can, I can still think of no bigger atrocity. I mean, to, to lie about that shit, it's just unbelievable. And, and so detailed as well, right? Like down, I mean, literally to the <laughs> microscopic detail. Like, we've, we found bentonite in these anthrax letters. It was Saddam. Look. The results don't lie, except they're full of lies. D down to the fucking chemicals, like li literally about chemical weapons, right? So they, they, they f manufactured this whole fucking propaganda machine. You think these people change? They've never been held accountable. Why would they change? No one has been held accountable in any capacity. Not, not you know, it's not even about the press. It's about the politicians themselves. Also, Bush, Blair, they're walking free. No one has been held accountable for anything, for any part of that. You got Trump the other day pardoning Blackwater uh, assassins and murderers who, ma who you know, massacred Iraqis. And no one is held accountable. Why the fuck would they change? So just exercise caution. That's all I'm saying. You know, that's all I'm saying. I think that's a reasonable position. There you go.